Okay, so if you have looked at the last chapter, uh, the last uh, tutorial, you will see uh, how we've loaded the data and normalized the, uh, the values that are in X. And we normalize it so that gradient descent actually works better later. Okay, what we're going to do now is carry on um, putting the gradient descent together. Now the first thing is, when, when I need to work with my hypothesis, you can see there my hypothesis uh, theta, so what, what am I predicting my result to be, needs to be theta zero. So this is the intercept. Eh? If you think of your, your graph, your x and your y axis, where is the intercept? Is it at zero or is it further up somewhere? Uh, plus theta 1 times x. So if we take our, our features, we times it by theta 1, and that gives us our slope for our prediction line. Right, so this, this uh, tutorial is expecting that you do understand a linear regression at least, and now we're just doing it with multiple variables and gradient descent. All right, so carrying on assuming that you understand the hypothesis, then you'll understand that what we want to do with x to make this calculation easy for us and to just do matrix uh, multiplication, which will then go and calculate the formula correct, is we need to put a column of 1s onto the front of x. Uh, if we have a look at x, I want to see a column added in the front here with 1s on it. So let's go and do that over here. We're going to use the 1s, uh, and let's call it xo, just so that it's got a different name to it. So uh, we're going to use the 1s function. And what's the length? Okay, the length is going to be, and I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to create a M here, M for the number of rows. So it's going to be the uh, length of Y. I'm just going to move this down in a second. Okay, so that does now just give us the length that we can actually use easy. So now I can say however many rows there are. And then I only want to, uh, I only want one column of ones. Now what I want to do is put this into, add this into a array. So this must be the first column, but then take all the columns from X and add them on the end. Okay, great. So now if I hit the round button, let's make our way through. And at the bottom here, let's say what's in the XOs. We can see there that we've got the normal X, but we've also added ones in front of it. So great, now we're ready that we can actually do our hypothesis here with uh, some simple uh, matrix multiplication. All right, so our gradient, to do gradient descent, the first thing we need to know is how many repetitions do we actually need? So let's say I'm just going to go for a 1,500 because we need to, uh, if you look at the, uh, the formula for gradient descent, and we'll get into the details later, but we need to repeat here until we get convergence or until we found our lowest cost. So let's assume that's going to be 1,500. We then need to guess at a bit of a learning rate, so I'm going to guess at uh, 0 0.01. Might be a good guess or might be a bad guess, we'll see a little bit later. And then we want our initial uh, thetas. Now in general what you do is, is you can choose any thetas you want to start off with, but you generally just start with, uh, with zeros, which is okay. And what we want to do here is create, we're going to use the zeros function. The length is going to be, this time it's going to be the number of features uh, plus one. The reason for plus one, it's because it's one, two, three, but then there's that, uh, that first column as well. So in the first column, because it's a one and we're dealing with multiplication here, uh, you can consider that theta zero, which is for the intercept. Uh, wh when we start our prediction, where do we start on the on the y-axis? And then each of these is the features that go into each uh, each x point over here. Okay, so each point on the x axis is going to be a, um, a grouping of those three features in our linear regression. So let's say it is going to be n plus one. Okay. Great, now we can actually run gradient descent. Now we want to return a few things from gradient descent. So firstly, what's our best theta? Uh, and obviously the theta is going to be for each column. Uh, it's going to have the intercept firstly, and then for each feature, we need to have what's the best slope. 
that we need to put in there. And the second thing we're going to want is all the costs. So let's go and then call the function gradient descent. And we want to, um, what do we want to pass in? So we want to pass in how many repetitions do we want to do? What's the learning rate? What's the thetas? And then uh, XO for the uh, X axis and Y for the Y axis. And then what we might as well do is let's pass in N and N as well. So N and N. Great. So I'm just going to copy that and I can put a semicolon there. And let's create a new function over here. So function uh, gradient descent, put in the end and hit the save button. Great. Gradient descent. Okay, super. So what I'm just gonna, I'm just going to change a couple of things over here. So firstly, uh, the input thetas will work with those, and then we will return those thetas. So I don't need a new uh, a new theta definition there. And then what we're going to do here first, okay, is we're going to set up our costs. So our costs we can set it up as a group of ones, and we need to set up. Uh, what the cost is for each repetition that we want to work on and we only want one We only want one column. Okay, we now need to go into a loop. So we need to say for um, And we need a number of repetitions. So I'll say for R equals one to Repeat so if that's 1500 then we are going to repeat uh, 1500 so that's here repeat until convergence so that's the step that we are busy doing here okay so this is where it gets a little bit tricky and we're gonna we're gonna divide it up uh, into sections here so the first thing we're trying to do is we're trying to get our hypothesis cost and we're trying to minus our our y which is our actual for that particular row so i is the is the row so for each row I'm trying to get a cost, and the cost is the hypothesis minus the the actual, which is the y. So what I want to do is take my thetas, if I go to my data over here, and I want to get my, uh, effectively, my hypothesis, uh, and, and keep in mind that our hypothesis, our thetas, for the very first time is going to be, it's going to be a zero, a zero, and well, all zeros over here. So I want to take that, I want to work out our hypothesis, but then I want to minus my y, so I want to minus the 1.5, and obviously I should get to a cost of minus 1.5 in the first time, because the thetas are all zero over here. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense to you. So here we go, we're trying to get our hypothesis, which we know is theta 0 plus theta 1 x, etc. Uh, then we want to, uh, then we want to minus the y, and then what we want to do, so once I've got my cost for each and every row, which is what I is, I then want to go and multiply for each individual theta now. I want to go and multiply it by that column and then apply the learning rate to it. So let's go and do this slowly but surely to end up with a new theta. So if we go back to our gradient descent, Okay, what I want to do here is, and let's call this our hypothesis cost, because hey? we're getting the hypothesis, but then we're minusing the y to get the cost. Equals, and it's going to be x, what are we coming in as? xo for x1s, times our thetas, and then we minus y. Okay, so this is going to be good matrix manipulation over here which will then go and calculate our hypothesis, but then also go and minus y. And for each row, what we're trying to do is get a cost value here. Okay, so for each row, um, the idea is to come back with what is that row actually costing us. All right, so let's just go and run this quickly. So if we go to main and we hit the run button, so the first thing we're gonna do is initialize our costs. So great, there we have an array for it. Okay, now what we're going to do is take XO and we're going to times it by, oops, okay, that's a mistake with the thetas there. I didn't say initialize it to only one row. So let me go in there and let's say only one row. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so if we have a look on this side now, we've got our XO and we've got our thetas. So according to matrix multiplication, let's put in our XO. 
And then let's put in our theta's, just so you can see this in action. What are we actually going to do? We are going to take this one, we're going to times it by that, plus uh, that one times it by that, plus that one times by zero, plus that one times by zero, and then it'll add those totals together. So effectively what I'm going to get is my hypothesis. I'll get back my hypothesis um, uh, figure, my guess, or prediction at least for for that particular it's theta zero is the is the intersection on the y-axis plus each of the features times the the uh, the individual columns. All right, so that's what's going to happen. So let's go and put this in here. All right, and you can see there the cost should be zero because the theta is a zero. So, but there we go. Each of those the hypothesis now is obviously uh, zero. Okay, but now what I want to do is find out the cost. So I want to go and now minus. So if I take the zero at the bottom over there, and I go and minus the cost, uh, y is actually 1.5. So the cost of, of my hypothesis thetas being all zero is going to be quite an easy calculation because it should end up being, well there we go, minus 1.5 because the original value was um, zero. Uh, the hypothesis at least was zero, which is that uh, this first bit over here. The hypothesis is zero, but y is actually 1.5, so therefore the cost of this hypothesis is minus 1.5. Okay, so hopefully that makes uh, sense to you. So if I go back now for that row, that is my hypothesis cost. So there we go, we've worked out this bit over here. Now the next step that we need to do is we need to go and, and times my hypothesis cost by x, and we need to do this separately for each feature that we have. So if I hit the stop button over here, all right, so we're now going to do the result which we have here, the hypothesis cost, and we're going to times it by our x, okay, but we've got to do it separately for each. So we're going to put this into a temp variable, and what we do is going to say take our hypothesis cost. And because we, uh, remember, matrix manipulation is a little bit odd. So what we want to do is, is say dot star, which means, hey, do this separately on, uh, on each row of data. We don't want to do it all together. Uh, and then I want to say times XO. All right, so let's just show you this in action. So if I take my hypothesis cost, so I'm just going to grab that row and let's put it in here just so that we do have an HC. There it is. So what I want to do now is take HC, but I want to go and multiply it by, and you can see here, we want to multiply it by each of the columns individually. So I want to take my hypothesis cost and then times it by each of the features that we have separately. So let's go and take that column and times it. So there we go. That's what I've done. Huh? That was my hypothesis cost. And if I have a look at my X's again, I ah, see I don't have it up there, so let's put it down here. So you can see 1.5 times 1 equals minus 1.5, okay? Uh, and I want to do this now on each of the rows. So if I say minus 1.5 times minus 1 gives me plus 1.5, okay? Minus 3 times minus 0 0.75 gives me plus 2.25. Okay, so that's that's the result. Sorry about the order of these over here. That's the result, but now have a look. Okay, so once I've done that, I've times multiplied the hypothesis cost for the row individually by each of the features. I now need to sum the results together. So let's just go and add a sum around here because per row, I only want one answer. So let's go and take that now. Let's clear it at the bottom here. So just to show you again, let's get HC up. Let's also get uh, XO up so that you can see them. So let's now go and multiply those together individually. So take uh, take this and times it by, you know, take that, times it by that, that, times it by that, that, times it by that, etc. Okay, then we go on to the next row. So 3 times 1 to give us a result. 3 times 0 0.75 to give us a result. 
but now we want to sum all of those together and there we go now we get a cost per per feature or per uh, theta so keep in mind this is theta zero which is the intercept and then it's the slope for each of the x features that we have and we've got three features and just keep in mind we've kept all those features exactly the same just so that we can easily tell with the data what we are busy doing here okay so um, okay now we've got one more step now that we've got we've summed them together so we've done this bit over here all right now we need to go and we need to multiply the result that's our learning rate times 1 over m so we need to take that and times it by the sum over here all right, so at this point now, I'm going to do it on separate lines just so that we have it easy. And we've got to, or easily, we can tell it easily apart what each step is doing. Now we've got to do this separately. Okay, remember J is the features. Eh? For each feature or for each theta, we've got to do that separately. So at this point now, we can probably go and replace our thetas. And again, matrix uh, multiplication is going to help us here a lot. So, okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to take the uh, thetas. Okay, now remember with matrix manipulation, we don't need to do this separately for each column. It should do it correctly for us. And then we want to minus. Now, what do I want to minus? I want to minus the learning rate times 1 over n. So let's take our learning rate times, and let's put this one in brackets, 1 divided by m. Okay, so... There we go. That gives us that little bit, uh, that part of the formula there. Okay, now I need to times that by my summed result here. So, and remember M is the number of rows in total, but uh, we've got a sum for it, so I want to times it by uh, my temp over here. Okay, and there we go. That should do the trick. So I'm going to be ending off the video here because this has gone on pretty long. But let's hit the button and we step through it. Okay, temp. And let's have a look now. So we end up with our thetas, which is zero. And we're going to go and minus the learning rate. Great, which ends up being 0 0.02 and timesing that by the temp. So let's have a look at this in action piece by piece. Okay, so there we go. It's taken our temp and it's times times it by the learning rate. Eh? So let's just look at the original temp over here. Okay, so it's taken that figure, times it by the learning rate, which is 0 0.0020, and I come up with my new, uh, my new total there. Now what I need to do is minus the original, uh, the original theta. So let's take it now all together and put it in here. Right, so when we put this in, okay, yeah, this doesn't end up quite right. Okay, so here's the problem is we have thetas, which are, uh, you can see that that is a matrix. Eh? It's a one-column matrix. The problem is our temp at the moment is actually a vector. You see it goes across. So what we can do is we want to transpose this into a uh, one-column matrix. So we can just put uh, a single quote over there. So let's go and retry this now. And there we go, that looks a little bit better. Hey? So you can see that's what we, we try to end up. We're trying to end up with a new theta over here. So we came in with uh, all zeros and now it's given us a new theta where the intercept on the y-axis is 0 0.0450 and then uh, this is the slope for each of the features. Okay, so um, that's, the, that's it for this one. This one has gone on a little bit long. In the next video now, we will add the costs to this, calculating the costs.